Hello, everyone, and welcome to our panel. Um, my name is Alex Chester. I am the editor-in-chief and founder of Mixed Asian Media. I am so excited for this panel because it is presented by Welcome to Chinatown. Uh, a little bit of visual description, or actually, I am in New York City on the unceded territories of the Lenape people and Kanarse people. I uh, have darkish purple, bright purple hair. I'm in a black and white tank top with some gold chains. I am of half Asian descent, so I have almond-shaped eyes and uh, tannish, light to tan colored skin with a blue ombre background behind me. Uh, I would love for our panelists to go around and introduce themselves as well. Oh, uh, real quick, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Jackie, do you wanna go next? I shall. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. I am Jackie Wang. Um, I am the head of marketing and communications at Welcome to Chinatown. I'm so excited to be here at MAMFest. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, a physical description. I am a Chinese woman. I have my hair is down and very floofy right now. I am wearing a tan t-shirt and I am in this sort of bedroom office space with um like painted black walls with high ceilings um and yeah thank you so much Alex for for having us we're super excited I shall pass it on to Harry thanks Jackie uh so my name is Harry Trin head of creative of welcome to Chinatown um my pronouns are him he his um I am Chinese Vietnamese American, so I have permed a short hair, um, tannish skin tone, almond shade eyes with a black and white pattern short sleeve with a gold chain. And I'll pass it over to Jenny. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Acosta. I am a food creative and volunteer designer at Welcome to Chinatown. Um, I'm in my studio in Queens, New York. Um, there's some of uh, some art and paint and paint behind me. I've got shortish hair, earrings shaped like oranges, a blue shirt, some lipstick. Um, oh, I am ha half Hainanese and part Puerto Rican and Irish. And uh, excited to be here. Nervous, but excited. Oh. Wonderful. Well, I thought we'd get started. Um, so I myself did not grow up with a Chinatown to go to. I was raised in a Jewish household by my mom and grandma, so we kept kosher. Uh, I, not kosher anymore since moving to New York City, but since being here in New York, I've connected with my mixed Asian community. And I have to say, Chinatown is so important to my friends and I and just our social life. We go there all the time to get food, to explore, to get boba, desserts. There's always something new to see and something wonderful to eat. So I want to know from everyone here, how has Chinatown impacted your lives? Did you grow up going to Chinatowns or were you like me where Chinatown became part of your life much later on? I can, I'll start because I think Alex and I have probably pretty similar paths towards Chinatown. Um, I grew up in central New Jersey, so um, a pretty decent percentage of Asian Americans. Um, it's funny, I, I didn't grow up with a Chinatown, but I did grow up with like a pretty solid like Chinese American community. Um, my dad was like the president of our local Chinese school association. So we were very active in that world. Um, but I, I sort of felt like I like kept that and then my like alter persona at school, like very separate. So like whenever I was in the Chinese community, you know, I was like at the Chinese schools, I was like in dance troops wearing like, you know, the full outfits, the like fake double eyelid eyeliner, the red lipstick that's just in the middle, like fans, like all of it, whole thing. And then like, I don't think a lot of my um, non-Chinese community friends at my high school like knew identity of that. Like 
you know, I wouldn't share photos. I, I wouldn't like invite them to shows, which is kind of interesting. Like I kept those two parts of me very separate. Um, and what I, something that I've like been thinking a lot about since, you know, working more with Chinatown this past year is like questioning why when we were younger, like we were only an hour away from New York and we would come in all the time. Um, but like very rarely would we go into Chinatown, we would spend time in like Times Square, we would go to like Lincoln Center, we would see shows and um, I never really questioned it. And it's just not something that like my parents wanted to bring us to. I think there was a sense of like, you know, it's not a place that we want to go to. Like, you know, these are the places you go to when you're in New York, which I think is very fascinating. A um, lot to unpack there. <laughs> but I think um, I went to school at NYU. And as I slowly kind of came to New York on my own and sort of as like a more individual, I found myself coming to Chinatown for like not really knowing any of the businesses because I didn't grow up with them, but just kind of like really um, subconsciously, I think I was feeling comforted by like the smells and just the sounds reminded me of like going back to, to China when I was younger. Um, and like, that's kind of how I got introduced to Chinatown like way later in life, probably like in my late teens. Um, and then I guess fast forward now with Welcome to Chinatown, I think one of the things that drew me to working with, you know, Jenny and Harry and all these lovely people is everyone has such a different relationship to Chinatown, like at every end of the spectrum, right? And even if you have a really intense, long relationship, like everyone's relationship is different too. Um, and getting to hear, you know, learn about businesses through people who have grown up here or people who are like me and like dove in so hard in the last two years. Um, it's been really awesome. And I think like the past year has just been, you know, doing the work, but also just selfishly getting to like, you know, explore more and hear about all these like hidden gems that, I mean, Harry knows all the places. I just like follow him when he walks around. He's like fried chicken here, tea here. <laughs> so getting to do that is, um, yeah, I think, I don't know, it's it's really important. And it kind of feels like I can ma mash those like two personas that I was playing when I was younger and here it like, like all becomes one, not to be too overly poetic. <laughs> But yeah, that, I think that is sort of like, I mean, I always knew the importance of having an Asian community because I, I had that growing up, but just having it here and having it so loud and like inviting others into it, I think is something that I'm learning later in life. I love that so much. Uh, I have to say, I did not really have an Asian community growing up a little bit because I was in theater as a kid and like with East West players. Uh, but otherwise that was really my only uh, intro to being an Asian and Asianess, uh, a lot of times the shows that were Asian centric uh, were played with white people playing Asian roles. So, yeah. Uh, but I would love to hear from Jenny and Harry about their introduction to Chinatown as well. Okay, I'll go next. Um, so, yeah, Chinatown, New York Chinatown is a big part of my childhood and my adulthood and even sometimes in my like in yeah in our work yeah because we um i spent a lot of time there as a kid going to um dim sum and yum cha with my grandparents and my aunts and uncles kind of like you know the asian brunch on sunday mornings and um so we had our spots and then i'd also like go with my grandma to go grocery shopping for dinner the same night or during that week and just be this little kid just like just aimlessly aimlessly following her around um and yeah I went to middle school in Chinatown so I got to like feel a little bit of the taste of independence like playing handball after school late at night under the bridge like with my class with my friends and then um yeah, as I got older, I spent a lot of time there kind of like more of a, in a therapeutic way, I guess. Like uh, sometimes I imagine I, I spend time there like by myself, like as if it's like you're like a salmon going against the stream of just like people as a whole, like walking on these streets. And you could kind of just like be in your own world in China, near Chinatown to me. And um yeah, I spend a lot of time in um, Asian grocery stores and just I'm really entranced by just like all the like sensory elements of Chinatown and how it can like bring you 
back and forth between like your present self and your kid self, like like having like a what rat ratatouille moment, and you you hear like certain ways that foods are cooked, or um, yeah, just certain colors and all that, and um, so that's yeah, trying sounds great. And actually, kind of met. I don't know which way Harry is, but I kind of met Harry because of Chinatown, because um, we went to the same college and uh, he did like a thesis project about kind of this like the romantic romanticism of Chinatown and his like Asian diaspora and like he was into that stuff, but I never knew him. And, but I was like, oh, your work's kind of cool. So um, yeah, and then like after college, you kind of like followed up and caught up and all that. So yeah, Harry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, thanks, Jenny, for the shout out. I have a lot of my thesis stuff sitting in my parents' home. And recently, they took a video of them like dusting it. It was like I wanted to cry a little. <laughs> um, so yeah, my experience in because, like, I feel like formative years of Chinatown. So I grew up in um, most of my time in Richmond, Virginia. So my family, we lived in um, in a very, like, white Caucasian neighborhood, middle class. Um, and all the other Asian American people were related to us because we were um, the Chinese and Vietnamese people that immigrated post-Vietnam War. And I believe that our sponsors just like brought all of us here. So they actually formed like a little like Chinatown inside Richmond, Virginia. So it was like a little shopping plaza. And then I realized my parents were like looking at a lot of the baked good packaging and they they saw all these addresses to Manhattan Chinatown. So we would drive up to Manhattan Chinatown on like a, maybe on like an annual basis and we'll like just like spend the whole day here. Uh, we would uh, we did the opposite as Jackie's family. We didn't go to Times Square. We didn't do anything else. So I didn't know anything else except for Manhattan Chinatown as New York City for all my formative years. Um, and then in the summers, I would uh, spend my time in LA Chinatown because my where my mom's extended family is. So what Jenny was alluding to, uh, LA Chinatown has a very different architectural story than New York Chinatown. It's very influenced by um, Hollywood and kind of the more of the towards like the 30s, 40s, up to mid-century um, Hollywood's perception of China. So it was very fanciful, whimsical, colorful. Um, and a lot of that I felt at that point um, was like, you know, I was kind of thinking about how can we reclaim that type of visual narrative because at before it was given to us from um essentially hollywood producers and what they thought chinatown was and what can be marketable and then as i was thinking about it more i realized that i always was really drawn towards that space and then when moving back to the east coast um i came back to manhattan chinatown and having these very like abstracted memories of like the the tenement buildings and all the lights and the sounds and like same as Jenny like when when me and Jackie and all of us aren't doing like an event in Chinatown or doing research or um are doing outreach like I, I like to just kind of spend my time here just um soaking in all the sounds and like just like the languages that I uh, feel very familiar with and occasionally I like call my family and be like what is this thing that they just said or like what is this I like take a photo and be like what's this um, so yeah, I think that for me, like, you know, it's always like, uh, it's almost like reopening up like a book at like a random page all the time. It's like, oh, this seems familiar. And then you kind of like dive deep into it. Um, so yeah, that's my experience with Chinatown. Well, there's one little thing that reminds me of, um, now that like there's FaceTime and stuff that like, I, sometimes now I call my grandma on FaceTime, like, oh, I'm trying to make this like omelet uh, pickled radish thing that she makes and so i was trying to ask her like which brand of saibo which is the pickled radish in Hainanese. i try to show her all the packaging because you know not all of them are this one like so 
I try to have her pick which one is a good packaging and show her all the stuff because she can't always be next to me. It's I like, love that spot. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I feel like Jenny and I have had this conversation about the like packaging of the sauces, like the things that you don't realize you're seeing so much when you're a kid that your parents are cooking with. And like, I, I was never, when I, when I was a kid, I was not super amped to go to the Asian grocery stores. Like if they're going to Costco, I'll come. If they're going to the Asian grocery store, like I'll just let them do their thing. But like, I think it kind of absorbs into us because we watched them for so many years. And then now when I go to the Asian grocery stores, it's like that therapeutic thing of recognizing the labels and like the lady on the bow and the faces that you're like, oh, my, okay, I know this. And then you'll like bring people who maybe are not as familiar and they're like, oh, what kind of like fermented bean paste should I get? I'm like, I, I think I actually know, like it's this one. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, the, the, the like changing of the experience with those products I think is, it's really fun. And um, the older I get, the more I'm just like, this packaging is so beautiful. Like it's so iconic. All these new millennial brands like have nothing, <laughs> nothing against these. I love that. I mean, I definitely will go to an Asian supermarket and with my like with my full Asian friends and our half Asian friends who grew up in a predominantly more Asian household. And I'll be like, teach me. I want to learn. So like, what's that? What's that? How do I make this? And I'm always asking questions just because it's not it's outside of what I was raised with. And it's been really awesome to be to f explore this, especially as an adult, because I feel like as a kid, I probably wouldn't have had the same appreciation as you were saying, but now I'm like, ooh, I wanna learn everything and I wanna eat everything. So, but I would love to ask you all like what, um, a little bit more about yourself and your role within Welcome to Chinatown. I can go. <laughs> um, so my role here is head of creative, which really just means um, I work with all of our designers and creatives like Jenny Acosa um, to kind of set the stage for a lot of the visual marketing events we do and in any type of creative direction. So um, a few of the programs that we do is currently, as we are speaking right outside the window, Meet Chinatown. So that's our new directory um, that we've launched to help people familiarize and kind of get familiar of like kind of the space of Chinatown and the different types of businesses. But on the creative side, um, we are kind of leading the branding and the identity of the visual identity. So when people start recognizing, they're like, oh, you see this, you see this logo, you see this type of purple, you see these tones of yellow, like that is New Chinatown. Um, on the other, one another campaign we do is also uh, Made in Chinatown, which is our merchandise program, uh, which also Jenny works with me too. And as head of creative, um, I'm also an independent contributor in that program, but really, um, I work to kind of help people kind of frame how they would conceptualize a business when working with us. So with Made in Chinatown, we are a pro bono design service for the businesses. Um, we make merchandise for them to um, have a passive second revenue. This was born out of the need to have some money coming in during the height of New York City pause. <laughs> Excuse me. And out of that, it's been almost a retelling of Chinatown through the lens of a um, of our generation. So like what were we experiencing when we were going to certain businesses or certain type of restaurants? And then um, for a lot of the New York people that um, have moved out or have had history in New York City, they take our merchandise and actually feel like it's like almost like having a piece of home with them. Um, I would actually love Jenny, maybe you can just speak on a little bit of like your fade out bakery one. I think that really struck a chord with a lot of our audience members. I have one personally. Um, and just, just give us a little bit of background of like your experience with um, the business and then how that evolved and changed while you worked with the business owner and then how you came to the t-shirt and the mug. Yeah, so as Harry mentioned, we have Made in Chinatown. Um, for um, business merch and w growing up, I went to a lot of Asian bakeries and just like collected the these like cake cards, which are just like little gift cards where you can uh, spend it and buy things. Someone told me you need to spend it all at once, otherwise, then. Uh, but anyways, uh, so I spent a lot of time going to Fei Da and Taipan and 
all these places as a kid. Um, and I feel like a lot, especially Asian pastry re uh, recipes, like they seem so mysterious to me as a kid and even as, a, as I was getting older because my family doesn't bake or make those things. So we'd always either have like an auntie or a friend of a friend, like they drop stuff off on holidays. I never knew how to make those things. And I, so I just go to the bakeries. Um, but yeah, then we, when I worked with Fada this past month I, um, with Harry and the founders, daughter, um, it really, yeah, it opened up the kitchen, I guess, to, to show like, yeah, there's, there's people behind this. It's a family owned business. And um, you, we learn a lot more than just like stuff about egg tarts, for example. Um, so we talked, we learned about how like um, the founder, he came here from Taiwan and like opened one shop and he started with breads as the main thing. So for one of our uh, products that we made, I designed a t-shirt and we focused on like this big slice of raisin bread on the shirt because that was my favorite loaf. And so I wanted to like celebrate that loaf. Um, and then, yeah, we, it was, it's been really fun to work with different small businesses to like see these everyday places as like art and as art. Yeah. Beautiful places. Like, um, we take uh, the checkered board element from the Feda logo and like put that on there and collage these pieces. Um, and also made like a mug um, that was like a east west um, kind of commentary because it was like a painting in the style of like Wayne Tebow, uh, who does these like pastry cases, but instead we did like a case with like hot dog buns and stuff. So, um, it was cool to like step back and learn about the origins of the bakery and then like make it our own and remix it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so cool. I love all of that. I love how hands on you are. And also you're making me very hungry. <laughs> I feel like we should all be just, I wish we were all sitting around together at like dim sum right now, yeah. just eating and eating everything. Like Another time. Like buns. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why didn't we? We should have just sat here just been eating stuff. Yeah. Next, next time. Like what about you? Um, yeah. yeah be, before, so I'm the head of marketing and communications. Um, before I go into sort of what I do, I want to say like the Faye Dasher is, um, I mean, all, our, all of our collections are so unique to each other, but it is like my favorite shirt. So if you just walk around with like a giant cross section of bread on your back, like I definitely recommend everyone checking out if you want to, um, start some conversations via carbs and your apparel. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I actually started with Welcome to Chinatown um, as a volunteer on sort of like a project management basis. So I would come into maybe like organize an event or something. Um, I, my background, my more like professional, if you can call it that background is in like brand and digital marketing. Um, but again, I really just wanted to get involved in Chinatown and kind of seeing what this group was able to do with the work and also um, in a way that is like visually appealing and the storytelling, like everything is so engaging. Um, and, and that's kind of the work that like our, our marketing team, we do, I think we, our work really centers around the businesses of Chinatown. We really see them as sort of like the heart and, and really like what makes Chinatown what it is and um, Manhattan Chinatown being, you know, one of the last like very authentic, like, cultural heritage gems. Um, and so a lot of work, our work with these businesses is working to really like tell their stories and whether it's people who spend a lot of time in Chinatown um, and us just wanting to kind of share the stories of the businesses that they're, they're frequenting and tell the stories of the business owners. You know, a lot of them, we might not know this, we know they make delicious food, but they've been here for many generations and um, the changes that, you know, passing down to family members and the stories of how they how they got to Chinatown, um, each story being so different. I think that's something that we're really passionate about telling. Um, 
And for people who might not spend as much time in Chinatown, I think there sometimes is this perception of it just being this like fun neighborhood for cheap eats and you buy some tchotchkes and, and you head out. Um, and, and that's that's actually a shameless plug for our event that's happening this weekend for anyone who's in, in the New York area. Um, we are hosting an event, it, it's called Meet Chinatown. Um, it's to relaunch our new digital directory, something that our team has been working on for a while to sort of um, like help digitize Chinatown a little bit and, and help businesses modernize, but in a way that is very easy for them to buy into. You know, we don't wanna create programs that are added work on what they already have to do, you know, in terms of recovering from last year and just like day-to-day -day business. Um, and so our digital directory is really taking kind of Chinatown review culture, trying to take it away from Yelp. Um, we know a lot of these businesses might not have a huge like digital presence. Um, some don't even have like a legitimate website or social media. Um, a lot of it is like word of mouth. You know, it, it's not that you don't know the name, but you're like that place on that corner, you go down, best dumplings, like that kind of thing. We wanna have a place where visitors can see that. Um, and so we are launching that this weekend with a bunch of like free community events from a scavenger hunt to like really get to know some of the businesses in our directory um, with prizes from Billionaire Boys Club for the, the hype people out there. <laughs> and then um, we have a shadow wall exhibit kind of pulling in stories of, you know, people in the neighborhood, people who grew up here, um, footage of, you know, historical Chinatown. Um, really just encouraging people who are here on the weekends to, to have a nice time with their friends to um, have like a very intentional experience in the neighborhood. So that is a long winded way to say a lot of our work is to really, you know, amplify the stories of the businesses, um, the ones that we're working on to, you know, when we started, it was really all about recovery and recuperation from um, all of the things of 2020. And that is still definitely, you know, we're not over that hump. Like the recovery is still is still um, kind of top of mind, but we're also looking to, you know, long-term sustainability and, and how can we make sure Chinatown stays open for business and how can we make sure Chinatown thrives? And that, you know, the energy that people who have been in the neighborhood know is just like very palpable and um, stays there for people in the future. I, I love all that. And I have to say, I've been to several of your events with my friends and it's really been cool for us because a lot of times we're like, no, 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 we're not going to try something new. We know this place is good. We yeah. go to all the time like, no, I don't know. I, I want to try that place, but I'm not sure. And I feel like you've made it really accessible and easy for people like myself who do want to explore, but are also kind of like, but I know this place is good. Mm -hmm. Actually just be like, no, no, you're, you're good. we recommend this place. This place is on the list go try it. It's wonderful. And so far, I have not been disappointed. And it's brought me out of my comfort zone and out of my friends out of their comfort zone, and just make it very accessible for the general general the public. So I have to say you guys have done an amazing job with that. And uh, I just anyone from Banff like watching and right now the festival, please check this out. They have amazing events and it's all for a wonderful, wonderful cause. I can't say that enough. And uh, yeah, I, I have to say you guys have done a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic job with that. Um, oh, thank you, Alex. Oh, you guys are so welcome. I, I'm but so that, like that reaction exact, is exactly what we want people to have. Like um, the, the recommendations in this app are from like from our team and people in the neighborhood and like, it's the same as like me going to Harry and being like, where should I get iced tea right now? But you know, anyone can can ha kind of have direct access to that. So yeah, we're really excited to, to get to use it and maybe, you know, venture out of their comfort zone in the, in the neighborhood. I, I have to say, uh, at least from my perspective, and I could be completely off point here. Um, I have noticed an influx of more diversity within the scene of Chinatown. It's not just all Asian people walking down the street now. You have so many more people, and I have to say, it's probably because of the work you guys are doing that have really just made it accessible to New Yorkers. So, yeah, I, I definitely, I kind of know what you're talking about, and it it could definitely have a thing to do with sort of all the community organizations that have popped up in the last year. There are like um, several of us kind of doing slightly different things, but all to amplify the businesses and just get the word out. Um, 
there's one example. There is a store in Chinatown called KK Discount. I know Harry is really tight with the family. Um, they're like they they were part of our event last night, and all three generations of the family were there from Mr. and Mrs. Lee, the owners, their daughter Narina, their granddaughter, who um, local celebrity. Her handle is Little Miss Chinatown. But they're so KK Discount is kind of and Harry, you can chime in here because I feel like you know way more about the store, but. They, it's like a self-proclaimed mom and pop target of Chinatown where you can literally get anything. Like Grace, the Grace Young has touted them as sort of like, don't go to Williams Sonoma to buy your walk. Like go to these stores in Chinatown. Like this is the real deal. And this is what like, you know, people who have been using them for decades, this is like, this is the real walk that you get. Um, and I think we've spoken to Mr. Lee, the owner, who's like, I've actually noticed a pretty different clientele coming into the shop. You know, it is a staple for the neighborhood and getting all the things you need. But now you have people coming in to like, you know, just check out all of the incredible goodies and also very practical things that they sell. Um, so that's always really exciting to see that, you know, we're able to reach a, a wider audience and just pull people into the neighborhood. That's always our intention. Yeah, just to follow up, <laughs> KK Discount just like this. It's almost like a labyrinth in the smallest little space you can ever imagine. You like walk in and you're just like confronted with this like super warm smile from like the owners. And then they're like, what do you need? What do you want? Um, but yeah, exactly what Jackie is saying that they've, um, all basically all the generations have told us in some form or way that um, they've been really surprised about the the addition of like the millennial or like our generation of people coming in. So like for myself, when um, I moved to New York City about like three and a half years ago, like, you know, I was just kind of like stumbling my way through Chinatown. Be like, I need a walk, I need a walk ring, I need a spatula. And like exactly what Jackie was like, it's like, I don't need one. I don't need a Williams-Sonoma walk. I just need like a normal walk. <laughs> so, um, with working with walking in Chinatown, it's really nice to like first like just like on a very like practical level just like oh, i know where to get this i if something happens if something breaks i know where to get something but then like it's just really heartwarming to learn about like their journey as a business owner and also as like a pillar of the community um so before covid they that business owner and the whole family was like, really close with um mostly just restaurants because restaurants will actually go to them to buy any last minute things. So if they run out of napkins or like a too many teacups break, like they go to them because those were accessible to them. They're really close to them and the prices are unbeatable. And then as uh, unfortunately as COVID hit, um, a lot of the businesses had to pause. So they had to really shift their clientele or diversify a lot more. So when working with us, they've like just said like, it's really interesting just seeing a bunch of like young people wanting to buy these things. Um, I was just there yesterday um, prepping them for the event and the mom was like, it's really funny. Like there's all these people from out of town that want to walk. And then I asked them, how are you going to bring it home? <laughs> like, she's like, do you put it in your suitcase? You just like take it home. Like what's happening? They're like, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I have that, I think for me, for myself, like, you know, that, that, that strikes a chord because like my family, we would literally buy like, like 50, 70 pounds of things and like pay, pack it in a minivan and like drive it down back to Virginia and same thing in California. We'll like buy all these things and like, we we'll like, this is enough for a year for us to survive, take it back to Richmond and like slowly pick out like little foods and little ingredients. Um, but yeah, like I, I really hope that like, you know, the Meet Chinatown app and the, that we're doing, like just like, introduces people to like more places that are um, not just restaurants and like little drinks, but like, you know, things that you would need as just like an everyday person. I love that. Yeah, support these businesses. Don't go to William Sonoma. I love that. Um, have any of you had previous experience with grassroots movements and community organizing and creativity before? Welcome to Chinatown. Um, I can go first. So funny enough, when Jenny and I were in college, I never led a group, but I was always kind of like 
tinkering in little groups, like either like I was just a member, I would do a little event. So I was in a few kind of like, like undergrad groups or clubs. One was like Asian, Asian Alliance. They would do um, more food based events, just kind of like showing people like, this is boba. This is how you cook rice in your dorm room. And that was really fun. Um, and I think that was like my introduction of like, oh, like this is like a really interesting way of like kind of like expressing your identity through just like kind of like physical interactions. And then um, when I moved to New York, I was actually introduced to the WOW project, uh, which is the, the project that's um, started by Nay Lum, which is like the third generation owner of Wing on Woe and Co. Um, so she does a really great job of uh, bringing like arts and activism into New York City. So I was a very passive person there. I was there for really the vibes and like the artist talks. Like I just was at that point, and I'm very interested what um, Jenny and Jackie felt is that like in the design industry, at least it's um, there are a lot of um, like Asian American designs, but we're not really talked about we're just kind of there um and i've also talked to my family about this and she's really uh, my cousin's relatively high up in a design company and she's like yes like you know there are a lot of workforce that asian american are but the people that are really controlling like the media and like what the words coming out are not asian american so they don't really put your name out there so when when just like being a passive person in the wow project it was just like oh there's like Asian American calligraphy artists and performance artists and graphic designers and illustrators and storytellers. And then I think that really stuck with me. I also, in my past previous corporate job, um, started the, the Asian diaspora ERG, which is an employee resource group. So it's like grassroots within the corporate grind. <laughs> so we will also do programming about like, um, specific holidays that were that were pertaining to us, and it also did very similar things. We would promote small businesses in Chinatown. If we did catering, it was always from a small business in, in Chinatown or K Town. Um, so that's where I kind of got my like, I wouldn't maybe like grassrooty like getting people together bug. Like always loved kind of like gathering people like to do something. Um, and luckily, Welcome to Chinatown was just like a really nice structure to kind of just like um, stumble upon. Um, but yeah, like, I'm very curious, like, what, like, Jackie, I have no, I don't know where you came from. You just got showed up in my life. And Jenny, you're just like, sure Jenny's just like being cool. Like, you know, when I was in college, I'm like, you're cool earrings. Like, I'm, I'm into you. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like the, the sort of general vibe of like our, our team of volunteers is that um, I feel like not that many like even our founders don't really have like nonprofit like or organizing backgrounds um and because of that like we're able to kind of run this team of people in a way that is slightly different I think um Vic our founder often says like she actually doesn't love the use of the word like activism sometimes because it can be sort of this like barrier right it feels very much like you're in it or you're not like you're fully you know this is all I do or you're totally like complacent. And I think what they're able to kind of turn that on its head is in that our volunteers like come from all different professional backgrounds, all different talents, like, and we're able to sort of tap into what people are, are good at doing and what they love to do and find a way for that to support Chinatown. Um, so that like really anyone can get involved, right? We have designers who have, are making merch for these businesses. We have um, like, developers and programmers who helped build our directory, who help, you know, update our blog and our website and tell stories. We have writers who are interviewing the businesses. Like it's just anyone can find a way of using what they already know to, to get active. Um, and so personally, I don't have a huge background in like kind of what this work is. Um, I, my previous jobs were sort of like tan tangentially related to like food ad advocacy and kind of like sustainable agriculture. So I got to work with other groups in that like we were sort of the more for-profit corporate entity that were supporting these organizations locally um, in like New York and Chicago, Providence, Baltimore, and just kind of trying to um, like increase fresh food access. 
And so I got kind of an introduction to how these really, really like boots on the ground grassroots organizations work. Um, but I think I, along with a lot of other members of our team, like didn't really have firsthand experience and, and how that runs. And I, I, I would say maybe even our organization doesn't run in a classic like nonprofit way either. It's very, you know, we're, we're very like, I think we're 50 to 80 volunteers right now. People come and go, people hop in on projects that, you know, when they have time or that's very much related to their um, kind of their professional background. And I think that's why we're able to like do a bunch of different types of programming and and like kind of cast a wider net. Um, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll let Jenny speak to that too because I think our, our creative team really is a great example of just like finding talented people, doing what they're good at and creating revenue stream for these businesses. Oh, we love a good revenue stream. Yeah, cash <laughs> money. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess, okay, community orgs. Um, some that I've worked with that are my favorites. I, uh, after college, I was volunteering with um, Museum of Food and Drink, MOFAD, because, um, uh, well, a lot of my work is about food and how it's such like a universal language. And I learned a lot about my own um, like mixed race identity uh through that and learned about others in like intimate and casual settings um through food like if you're just grabbing a slice of pizza it's your favorite spot there or you're learning about like a grandmother's dish or something like that um and then also creative mornings was a, a place that i helped volunteers a bit that i really loved and it brought a lot of creatives together um, to kind of like bring access of like um, all these like conferences and things that were very expensive. Um, not this one though, but, but they were expensive, but Creative Mornings like made it more accessible for creatives was free every month. And, um, and then, yeah, I think as Harry was talking just now, I was thinking about like, we were before Welcome to Chinatown or before we grew into what we are now, at least for me, I feel like these orgs that I was working with or projects or companies, um, it was a lot about, I guess, like general, like human identity or like certain things you have in common. But then uh, I think after joining like Welcome to Chinatown or meeting other like mixed race or Asian creatives, it kind of felt like, um, like, like we're working on, we have the same values or like passions or excited about certain things, but we're like, we never knew that we existed. So we're like, I faced the, the other way. And then finally you'd like turn around like, oh shoot, you're like right there. Like, wow. Okay. Let's, let's be friends. Like, um, and then also I think me being like partially Asian and then seeing places like Wing on Woe as I got older, I think personally growing up, like, I think I liked being like the mixed Asian with non-ish Asian friends or other mixed Asian friends that knew a little more about like the spots in Chinatown are Asian things and my other Asian friends. So I had to share that. And then you meet other Asians who like know those things. And you're like a little bit like, Hey, wait, wait, I'm supposed to know that I'm the ones, but then you're like, wait, but let's be friends because why are you, like, we both like to go there. Let's go there together. Like let's work on this together. So I think that's what I like thought about a lot that push and pull of like, I, f I feel uh, so welcome and excited about um, like spaces like Wing on Woe, like May and Gary, her dad, like, oh, changed my life. That's another story. But um, yeah, I get excited about those spaces, but I also like, I'm kind of aware that like, oh, I'm not like fully Asian. So like, I'm also just, kind of watching on the side, but I also see myself in that conversation. I'm like watching myself, but I'm not there, I'm not there. So yeah, that's um, my thoughts about that. 
Well, I relate very much to what you just said, I have to say, uh, especially as, as a, a half Asian person myself. Um, and I, I do think food is, can really heal the world. Just sitting down to a good meal with people, I really think it can like just change perspectives and heal. Like, and everyone should, I wish everyone could experience that. Um, I would love to ask you all like, what do you think the importance of Chinatowns and other small communities like Chinatowns are within cities or just in small towns? What do you, what, what do you think the importance of this and what is the weight of that? Well, being from a semi-small town <laughs> that also had a very little tiny Chinatown is that um, at least growing up in a predominantly white, white public school system, is that it's really nice to just have kind of a third space, like a public space that's mixed with commercial and leisure that um, you can just kind of be in and kind of see yourself in. It's the same as like Jenny was speaking about, is that there's there's a lot of power of just like, seeing yourself or you seeing your like family's values or practices or like kind of cultural background like reflected somewhere else. Um, and I think that's why even with people that don't necessarily like grow up in Manhattan, Chinatown, they, they feel very gravitate. They're like gravitating to it. It's like a, almost like a magnetic field that like, they're like, oh, like this is something that like my mom used to make or my father or my aunt. And it's those things that I think that they don't necessarily have like a monetary value to it, which we love talking about here. But I think that that visceral feeling of like belonging um, in such a diverse um, country that we're in that like it's really important that like you know so far in media you know it has been shifting to be more diverse but like you know us growing up like you know we didn't really see a lot of us like on screen or in written text or even like things like in our textbooks so like seeing another place that's like almost like um, treated as like a truth or like a like something that's like non-fiction is it's really like reassuring of like your identity it's like oh like you know other people also eat like you know i don't know like like noodle soups it's not just a casserole or it's not just a sandwich you know like those are like those are the things that i those are my questions i had when i was growing up like i had a lot of like um othering moments even though i like i'll have those moments and i'll be like you know what i'm gonna bring my herbal soup and my like poached chicken with rice every day <laughs> because I needed to eat it because I could not really digest dairy at that point. <laughs> and then, but then, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, you're eating it, you're enjoying it, you're thinking about your family, but then you're like sitting next to like a classmate that's eating um, something that doesn't reflect who you are, but that is, reflects them. And you're like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. And it's not necessarily like, I think maybe at that point it wasn't really like negative or positive, but it's, they, the majority culture has the benefit of like seeing their culture everywhere. So it's always validating. It's like, you know, it, it's like they're swimming in their own, like kind of just like every day where like for us, it's like, you know, it's really important to have these enclaves of cultural neighborhoods. Um, even if it's just like, um, as Jenny said, even if it's just like a grocery store or just like a few shops or like, you know, as lucky as we are, like, you know, multiple Chinatowns in a New York city area, it's, so important for us to kind of just like see yourself in there. Absolutely. Jackie, do you have any thoughts you'd like to add? Yes. Yes to everything Harry said. <laughs> I think that kind of like validation or almost like giving the space to be really proud of it is really important. Um, I think I spent some years like being proud internally, but not really shouting about it and just kind of like being proud of it at home and, you know, not bringing poached chicken to school and like, you know, not not cooking those things for my friends when they come over. Um, but I mean, it's similar to kind of entertainment, right? Like the more you see it, even us, the more other people get to see it. Like, it's just, I don't know, it makes me want to like talk about it more and it makes me want to like be more loud about it. I think um, from like, I think I've seen um, the like poached, no, the steamed egg, like dangung dish, which is like just steamed egg and water with like chili oil and scallions on top, which is just like 
I think I grew up eating it when I was sick. It's like the easiest thing to make. It takes about two minutes. Um, but then seeing that on the cover or not the cover, like the main website on New York Times cooking and like that, this is like, I feel so much pride in this dish that I never really thought I would. Um, and it, it's kind of the same experience of, I recently watched um, Shang-Chi several times and like seeing the, the character's sister, who's just this like badass warrior woman. I'm like, is this what other people have been feeling all these years of watching these like, you know, white male heroic characters? Like, like they got to feel this for the past, you know, centuries. Like that is, I didn't know that. I'm so jealous. We need more of this. Just like I, those feelings I didn't know I could have from seeing like coverage and like mainstream mass media um, is kind of the same thing of like having a physical space, a physical neighborhood to be able to like have that feeling just walking around and seeing people eating the food that like I never was really allowed about as a kid. Um, and then on the other end, I think kind of outside of like our experience of Chinatown, when you come here, you'll see that, <clears throat> excuse me, it's really like its own ecosystem that is, it's like self-sufficient, right? Like you can stay in Chinatown, get everything you need get to, to get done, purchase everything you need to purchase and never leave. And I think that's really important for, you know, recent immigrants, people who might not speak that much English and have this like kind of safe enclave to, to survive and live in is really important. Yeah, about what Jackie said about Shang-Chi, like I also recently saw it. That's kind of how actually, I didn't wonder that about like white stories and stuff, stuff, stuff like that. Um, but I was like, oh, is this what it's like if I were to like live in Asia? Like, like so many amazing Asian films and like when I visited Singapore to see family like uh, a few years ago. I've been a lot when I was very little, but going as an adult and like meeting other creatives there who are doing things and food or art or something there, I was like, oh my gosh, it's just, it's everywhere. Like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Like, and then now, like, I guess maybe I thought that there was diversity like that in New York or in US, but yeah, it was, it's not as big as like that. And then, but working with places like Welcome to Chinatown and like having Chinatowns, then you feel more at home. And like what you mentioned about nonfictions, Harry, that was really interesting. Like, um, yeah, I think home and safety are like, two really important things of why Chinatowns and certain like communities should exist so people can see more of themselves and things. And like, if, if you don't feel at home or you don't feel safe, like you won't be able to like provide for your family or start a family or be creative and innovate and give back or give to yourself and things like that. So I think like, yeah. And, and also, different kinds of Chinatowns because like New York Chinatown is very different from LA. Manhattan Chinatown is different from Flushing Chinatown. So it helps to also even have like more umbrellas of diversity within that <laughs> diversity. Mm, yeah. I love all this. I mean, so we're, we're getting close to the hour mark. So I would love to ask you all recommendations of places to eat, your favorite places, your favorite foods. Where should uh, people start if they've never been to New York City Chinatown? Hey, the directory. Hey. Welcome to the directory. Oh, I'll also shout the two places that like we already mentioned are huge personal faves like Feida, you haven't been, go now right after this <laughs> um, and then KK for anything that you need to get. Um, a newer spot that has opened up that Harry and I are actually trying to go to soon is it's round K. Um, it's like a coffee shop. They have this like, I've only seen pictures I haven't eaten yet, but this egg sandwich. Yes, it just looks so buttery and fluffy. Um, and has this like adorable white outdoor seating area. The owner Han is just like the sweetest human being. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my rec for like a newer spot that has just opened, I think 
this summer, so pretty recently. I, I think it's the same place. It used to be um, not quite in Chinatown. I think, is it? Yeah, they, yeah, it used to be at reception, like he had a little pop-up there. Yeah, yeah, and he has opened up his own spot. It's like round K by by Han or by Soul, I think his name, yeah. by Soul. Yeah. Oh, I'm so I glad. Thank God, I didn't know he had um, a pop-up beforehand. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I guess I go next. There's so many, it's such a broad topic. Like, where do we get a chance in the beginning? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think. Oh no, I'm like nervous now. <laughs> it's there's no actually, it's, answers. Yes, I think um, if you're gonna come like in like let's say the morning, I personally really love going to um, Tony's, so right on Bayard and uh, Mott Street. They do um, they're called Chung Fun in Cantonese, which is a rice crepe like a steamed rice sheet and then there is uh, different types of proteins like folded into it so they have the tony special that has like egg and shrimp and pork and then they put like a sweet soy sauce on top so it's like that's what i grew up eating as like a breakfast it was a very elaborate breakfast but like a breakfast and then you can also have um some of the cold drinks uh which is very reminiscent of hong kong diner food which is this very interesting cuisine of like like British influence with um, some Chinese um, tea culture. So like they have things that are like, like Milo, but they also have like Lipton tea with lemon. They have chrysanthemum tea. It, they have like uh, Hong Kong milk tea, which is everyone's very familiar with, with boba. So that's like the spot to like, kind of like set your day and like have like a very nice hearty breakfast. Um, and Personally, I think maybe a second spot. I'm just going to put a second spot out there. Um, I really love going to, like, I love Chachi stores. If you see my apartment, it is a Chachi store. Um, I love going to Ting's, which is on the corner of Pell and Doyer. It's like an old, like a very old school store that's like opened in 1960. Um, the owner, Eleanor, um, she runs a store with her mother and also her daughter. And it's a place where at first glance feels very like, oh, cool. Like there's like the things you would expect from Chinatown. But the more you kind of just like stand in there and observe the layers of pieces that she has collected, um, it's almost like a visual history timeline of Chinatown. I, I bought all my Christmas gifts there this past Christmas. I bought face powder from like the 1950s for my mother. And she, and I just bought for fun. It's like a stocking stuffer. And she's like, this is the same thing my grandmother used in Vietnam. And like, we never opened it. And she's like, this is, she's like, it's brought so many memories back to her. She's just like, kind of like, oh my God, where, she's like, of course you will find this, Harry. But like, <laughs> I was like, said directory. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that those are really great places to kind of really dive deep into like, you know, just like a really great taste of like, um, or like a cultural cuisine and also like historically how Chinatown has evolved. Good suggestions. Um, for the little list, I'll do, I'll do rap five. Uh, I really like Kam Man. It's like a mini snack grocery store on top. And then downstairs, it's like really quiet, tranquil, like ceramics and dishware and like, random stuff and it's a really nice relaxing store deluxe food market i love for meats fresh meats you're doing hot pot or you do butcher shop butcher side some veggies and the like uh what's it called the fluorescent lighting it's just really really nice vibe um uh, but oh, yeah great meats yeah uh noodle town and king's kitchen are my favorites for like the cut barbecue meats on rice or wonton soups and clay pot rice stuff at King's Kitchen. So good. They have duck churn fun, at, uh, duck inside the rice noodle roll. Uh, Columbus Park is the park I like a lot. I spent time there in middle school and it's just nice astroturf, nice chill place. Um, and then I really like um, the, the, there's a skewer cart on the corner of Grand Street and Christie Street um, by the D train. 
Um, and I get lamb and chicken gizzard skewers. They're usually open at nighttime, um, but that that's my favorite spot for skewers. And yeah, I think like to start, just kind of like walk around and don't have a particular like like a guidelines for the day, but maybe just stay in those boundaries of Chinatown and like just bounce back if we go too far to Soho or something and just like pop in places, go to the shops, like what Harry mentioned, Tings, a little bit dusty, but there's like, so, not Tings, but there's like, there's gems in there and like, there's, yeah, there's some, there's like an elementary school book shop near East Broadway, that's really cool. I've gotten things there. Um, yeah, just like wander around. That's, I'm, I'm excited to go back to Chinatown and I was just there. So I, I can't wait to try these places you all recommended. Um, we'll, real quick thing before we wrap up, if people want to volunteer for, to, for Welcome to Chinatown, how can they, where can they find you? I'll take this one. You can you know, email us at Chinatown at welcome to Chinatown.com. You can Instagram DM us. That's how a lot of us got involved. That's how I got involved personally. Um, we will direct you to the right team and person who can, you know, get you involved in whatever, in whatever capacity you would like. Um, we also have, if you want to be less of like project based, but more just like, you know, weekend events that you can help out with or helping with canvassing when we um, do our grant applications. Like we have sort of one day volunteer events as well. Um, if you email us, we can get you on that list so you can get a, you know, just opportunities in your inbox whenever they arise. Um, and yeah, I think last plugs are just check us out on Instagram at welcome.to.chinatown. Um, we're pretty active in like sharing events that we have going on um just like talking about our businesses non-stop um it's a really good place to kind of keep up to date of what's happening in our organization as well as just the neighborhood in general anything else harry and jenny that i missed oh check out the directory yes i was gonna say that <laughs> meet chinatown.com that's one word uh, if you're on your phone um you will click on the navigation bar and it'll bring you down to the directory that is a great place to find all the spots that we talked about and more. Uh, if you're looking for our merch, it's madeinchinatownny.com. Uh, you'll see the Fade Out Bakery um, pieces along with a bunch of other on that website. And yeah, definitely, find, definitely follow us on IG. We will always post essentially every single day. If you're looking for something, just like search on us there. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Jenny. This has been an absolute pleasure. And I, I can't wait to go eat now because I'm starving. So thank you all. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a great event. And thank you to everyone watching. I hope you are enjoying the festival. We have some more awesome things in store for you. Take care. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you, Alex. Thank Bye. you for your time. Thanks, Alex. Thank you.